So, your Prusa Mini finally arrived, and you want to know a bit more about the Prusa Slicer? Check it out! Okay, so I got my new um, Prusa Mini, and I'm very familiar, I'm actually uh, quite used to the Cura Slicer. But it looks like there is no profile for Cura yet, and uh, you know, I tried a bit to play around with the Cura settings, but I couldn't really find a, a good uh, way to deal with it, so I said, okay, let's give a go to the Prusa Slicer, it's made for this, right? So this is uh, how I went about it, uh, and a few tips and tricks to uh, get yourself started. So here is um, the layout of the Prusa Slicer 2.2. I already uh, uploaded the bust of Nefertiti, it's a model I love, but anyway, that's uh, not really a deal. So, usual interface for placing the model, you can move it around with arrows, so you can click on the arrows and move it around. Or you can also input coordinates here manually to position it uh, in, in some other way. If you right click, you can as well uh, have a bunch of uh, options and we'll go through this later. There is also an auto arrange feature, it will just move the model in the middle, if you have more than one model it will space them equally. You can of course scale it, that's a nice scaling interface, so you can scale it over one single axis, or you can scale it globally or upwards. So, I find this pretty nice. Of course you can rotate it um, this way. And there is another one that I like a lot, which is that you can select a face to put up on the print surface. So if I click on here, it will just flip it upside down so it will stay on that surface. So it will, as you see, it will detect a few surfaces and it will allow you to easily place your model on that surface without effort. I find that pretty useful, so um, I use it sometimes. And that is it for the, for the interface. Um, What's next? So, you have three tabs in here, so you can set your printer, your filament, and your print settings. So I'm going to go in reverse order, starting from the printer settings. I have my own uh, printer uh, profile. I have a perk that I name a lot of my devices after snakes, so since uh, the Prusa Mini rattles a bit, that's a rattlesnake coming up. So. A lot of preset here, so there is one thing I should note uh, first. You have these three buttons on the top right corner, Simple, Advanced and Expert. So, if you click on those, it will open up more uh, preferences that are more advanced. So, what I usually do is I leave it to Advanced and then you take note of these colors, because these colors are actually uh, connected to the mode you're using, so I use Expert. So I see everything, and then sometimes, you know, if I see stuff that I don't really understand what that means, then I leave it alone. So, uh, to begin with, uh, a few things. I mean, from, from the printer itself, there's uh, nothing really to do on the general tab. I have made one change on the custom G code. That drove me nuts in the beginning, because it doesn't look there's anything strange, until you go to the final line, where you have this M221S95. So for some reason, someone has decided at Prusa that the standard default um, flow for this machine is 95%. I found this quite annoying in the beginning, and I didn't really understand how this was set. So then I found it here, and I commented it out. I leave this here as commented. You, you, can, you can add a semicolon here. If you do that, that's uh, commented, so it's not going to be written in the G-code file. That's pretty much it, uh, I think, uh, yeah, no touching on the accelerations and jerks, and for the extruder you have this retraction here. found it works quite okay in my case, um, I didn't uh, have so much uh, time to look into this, but uh, for the time being I leave it alone. Just to say that here is the retraction uh, part where you can set retraction, which is the default retraction, and then when you go to the filament settings, you will see that you can override some of these settings in the specific filaments. And that's where we are headed now, so filament, again, a number of uh, things in here, so there is diameter of the filament, of course, multiplier if you have one, density cost, this is just to calculate the average cost of your print. 
And then finally the temperature. This is what uh, most in most cases uh, we're going to change if we go and change the filament. The cooling section, you can activate the fan speed and you can uh, disable it for a number of layers. This is uh, everything as well. Default here didn't change a thing. Advanced, this is the tool change parameters. Again, this is for um, when you do the automatic uh, material change. Uh, I didn't change anything here. Filament overrides, as I was saying before, of course, PLA is the default, so nothing changes here. And then you can have also some custom G-code, uh, no change for me there. Print, print settings, finally. So here is where you have a lot of things that you can play around. First and foremost, what I believe is most important, especially if you want, if you have trouble uh, with getting the first printer stick, is to check for first layer height. You have a bunch of presets here, so if you go for the detailed ones in the default, you see that there is always a bit of a bigger first la layer height because you don't want to go on a very thin layer for the first layer, or you can have some adhesion problems uh, when you lay down the first layer uh, to begin with. So what I changed here is uh, I actually increased it to 0.3 when I go for 0.2 layer height, which is my default because, uh, yeah, if you don't uh, go for uh, things that you want to have very nice and tidy, then 0.2 works for in most cases for me. And I want to set 0.3 because uh, unless there is something specific in that first layer, because maybe I'm printing something upside down and I want it to be very neat, um, usually it's just the bottom of the print, so I don't care. I prefer to have a bit more thickness there to uh, make sure that the print uh, attaches properly. Perimeters as well, I have uh, set it to 3, the default is 2. Uh, that also depends if you're printing functional parts or if you're just printing decorations. Uh, that is entirely up to you. Same as with the horizontal shells. Uh, just remember that, of course, if you change layer height and you specify a number of layers, then that will scale down uh, accordingly. Infill, not much to say here. I change this pretty much every print. I decide if I want an infill at all, and then uh, the pattern doesn't really matter to me. Skirt and brim. Um, a bit of uh, digression here. I usually don't use skirt or brim unless uh, you know I have something that is thin or narrow, in which case I use a brim. Uh, I don't know why, for some reason, there is uh, in the default setting, if you go here in the default, they're doing a three layers skirt height, so that means that the skirt is printed for the first three layers. I don't really understand why they didn't set to one, so yeah, that's uh, I, I if I have to use it, I'm going to use it to one uh, only one height. Um, yeah, then uh, support material. That's a bit of you know there's something that you can tweak quite a bit in uh, in this. Uh, uh, slicer, so um, maybe I'm going to do a specific video for this, but just to show you a bit what happens on the plate. So if I turn again the queen facing us, just for you know, just for the fun of it, then there is this three options for supports. You can choose supports on build plate only for enforcer, or enforcers only, or everywhere. So if I click on everywhere, just to share with you a bit what happens. So this is what happens if you print with uh, supports everywhere. So you see, for example, there is a bit of support here on the forehead, and there is a lot of support here on the back side of the print. You can look through it, and you will see that there's a huge amount of support. It's still calculating, but I can still see the preview here. So yeah, that's uh, I would say that's a bit of overkill uh, for this model here. So especially there's a few supports that make very little sense, like for example this one or this one on the forehead, and there is yeah some over here that doesn't really make sense. I printed this model quite a few times, and I would say there is basically no need to have any of the support on the back here. The only thing that needs support is the ears and a bit of the chin. You see also here on the eyes, so there's a lot of support going on around the face, which could actually ruin the print. So how are we going to go past this? There's basically two ways. So let's go back to the model space. So the two ways are using enforcers 
or exclude or uh, or excluders. Yes. So if you click on the on the model, you click you right click, and you can add either an enforcer or a blocker. What does this mean? Is that the blocker is basically blocking supports from happening, and enforcer is creating supports only when the enforcer where the enforcer sits. You usually use the cylinder, but you can use whatever shape you like. Again, you move it the same way, you move it and scale it in the same way as you do with any other model. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try to move it so that I only have the ears and the chin in the picture. I don't want to support the nose, so I think I may have to add a couple more. So I'm going to use one for the chin, and then when you see what when you when you select it out. It will be a bit, uh, you know, transparent. So I click on the model again. I click again, add support enforcer, and then I want a cylinder again. I move it in here, and then I want to put it on the ear, trying to avoid anything else. And same, I want to do one more. So I'm going to do one more for the cylinder. And here you go. So we have the ears covered, we have the chin covered. So let us slice this again and see what happens. As you can see, this uh, slice is clever enough that if it already has sliced the model, it will save the mesh and it will not slice it again. So the second slice is significantly quicker than the first one. And it is only computing the support as you might see. So as you see here, the support is now on the chin and on the ears. I could probably have used a bit lower height because I don't really need the support on the top part of the ears, it's just on the, on the lower lobe. So I could lower that, but uh, I think you get the point. So in this way, you're saving a lot of uh, filament and uh, also, most importantly, you are actually saving the surface of your print from having uh, residues and having to deal with support, which can be a bit of a pain in the neck, if you allow me to say that. And that's it. So, in a nutshell, I would say the two most important settings that I have found in this slicer to be specifically important. The first one is about the first layer, layer height. I set it to 0 0.3 and that uh, solved a bit of uh, trouble to me in uh, uh, dialing in uh, the, um, uh, the height setting of the printer itself. And the second one, yeah, getting rid of this uh, S95 drove me nuts to understand why it was like that. And actually, if I see that there is some problem in the beginning layer, sometimes I crank it up to 110 and then I move it back to down to uh, 100. But uh, yeah, I just don't get why Prusa has decided to have 95% uh, as a standard one. And that's it for the workspace here of the Prusa Slicer 2.2 uh, basics. So this is my experience so far with the Prusa Slicer. I would say, all in all, I'm pretty satisfied. I think, uh, you know, it's nice that uh, they have built a printer and a slicer together, so they have customized it a lot. It's very user-friendly, very much helpful for people that are new to the hobby or to the job, and they want to uh, not spend so much time in a learning curve. They would just want to get their printer, unpack it, assemble it, and just start printing right away. For that, I think Prusa Slicer is is amazing. Yeah, Cura, there's a lot of stuff in there. You know, if you open up all the Cura menus, you will be overwhelmed by settings. It looks like it's super customizable, right? But then, how many of these settings are you actually using? Well, when it comes to me, not so many that I would like to. So, in the end, you know, having a software that takes care of all the ASO, I think it's a nice uh, pro to have. So, that's my conclusions uh, for the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. So, if you like what you see, then hit please the subscribe button, ring the bell next to it if you get, want to get notifications of my uh, next upcoming videos, and until next time!